Hey everyone, Brian Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. Some of you might notice a little different camera angle here. I normally use my my iPhone from my mount on my windshield there, but it uh, sometimes it shakes. And even if I use the the rear-facing camera that's supposed to have some stabilization, it doesn't work as well. So um, I end up getting an action cam and I just have it on my door glass here now. And by the way, uh, we're able to pick up uh, some new equipment based on uh, our Patreon channel. So those of you that subscribe to our Patreon channel have been helping us to, to pick up uh, more equipment so that we can improve the quality of what we offer you in our videos for both Patreon and for YouTube. Uh, because those of you who know the YouTube business model, it doesn't really pay all that much, really it's pennies. Uh, but at the same time, it's good to get the information out and YouTube is a great medium to do that. So what I want to cover today is your, your mindset and whether it's a constructive mindset or a self-defeating mindset. So let's say you're training and you, you've been training for a long time and you've gone through the ranks and you've earned your rank. Through whatever reason, you, you know, we, we, you know, a lot of people tend to think, you know, when I talk about this that, you know, you know, we're being arrogant or I'm being arrogant when I say stuff like this and I'm not. I'm just stating what is. Um, and one of my big contentions was that jiu-jitsu as it's gone toward the sport side and the competition side has become a different jiu-jitsu. Uh, it's, it serves its purpose, you know, for scoring points and, you know, for, you know, whatever you need to do to score points and to gain advantages. And when you, when you, when the focus of your art becomes the scoring of points, then you begin to believe that the art is what it always has been, but it's not anymore, right? That's uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, that we really have to kind of walk the fine line. Competition is nice, but if our objective is self-defense, then we automatically are gonna give up doing a certain number of positions that, that work very well in competition. But we wouldn't, we don't do it in our school only because if you look at it from a self-defense point of view, then it doesn't work anymore. You know, one of the things that uh, really woke me up to that was, um, I have a friend, I haven't seen him much lately, but the last time I saw him was years ago, probably about a good 10 years ago, and came over to the house, and his training was very different. He trained with a, with a school that was, that was all about fighting. We ended up going no gi, it was a hot summer day, and training in my garage, and as we're training, I'm playing guard, and he just touches my forehead. He goes, oh, punch you there. And we're training some more, and you know, oh, punch you there, you got you there too. And just kind of made me aware that these positions that I was doing was very not helpful um, when it came to my original goal. And, when, and you know, there was, like I said, you know, we had that period of time where I kind of plateaued in general, uh, in jujitsu and in life, and he kind of woke me up to that, made me realize, oh, snap, you know, what I'm doing is not, not really where, I, it's not taking me in the direction I want to go, right? You know, when you're, when you're sailing on a boat from point A to point B, you never go in a straight line. Because of the wind and the current, you know, in the ocean, you're, you're constantly off course. And what you have to do is you have to always turn yourself back on course. Same thing happens when you're flying a jet you're constantly being taken off course and you need to get yourself back on course. And that's what happened. That was a moment where I was a number, I was going a number of years off course and I need to find and get myself back on course. You know, let's say you're, you were training at one school that um, you didn't know any different. It was just the way they did things, very much competition oriented and then started watching some, some of uh, Kama Jiu Jitsu YouTube videos and thought to yourself, you know what, there's another option, right? You know, all this time what I've been doing isn't all of what jiu-jitsu is, there's, there's, other, there's another type of jiu-jitsu, let me go and explore this. So you go and explore this, and you come to an old school school. Now, as, as great as you know, it is to be a world champion, and, and you know, at that level, they're all good, but they're, they're, they're a special group. You know, they're not, they're not the, the average, they're the exception. But you get to this school, and, and, and you, you see that it's an old school type gym and you end up training there and, and you, 
you think, wow, they don't do this, oh, wow, they don't do that, or, oh, they do this that way, wow, you know, I was told that's, you know, that's the old school way, it doesn't, but if you really think about it, if you take the top old school guys from the, you know, who got, who were black belts in the 80s and 90s, and you put them against today's black belts, it'd be a good match. Yeah, you know, as far as competition, you know, in a, in a tournament, you know, do I think that the top competitors of 30 years ago would do well against the top competitors of today? Definitely. Um, they do well. On the other hand, the competitors of 30 years ago, the black belts then, they were all trained with jiu-jitsu as self-defense. So they did the old combatives uh, type things. They they did do, every once in a while, they do Valley Tudo matches. Uh, they, they did, you know, get into street fights more so than competitors today. You know, when people say, oh, you know, that's the old stuff, you know, I, I wouldn't sell them short. Um, you know, if you took like a, you know, like a Higa Machado, you know, how, you know, he's been trained, as, as have all his brothers brothers have been, they've been trained in the old style of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, right? They, they were Hall's Gracie students, and they eventually got their black belt from their cousin, Carlinos. Um, Carlinos as well. Um, he was part of that, uh, that fight team that the uh, Halls used to take around, you know, him, Hickson, and a couple other people. And they all know the old style, they know the self-defense. How many of them teach that today? I don't know. But a lot of the factors that went into successful self-defense, such as base, um, is not taught today. And the reason why I know is because people will show up at a Hickson seminar and he goes over base and their mind is blown. They're like, whoa, what is this? I was never taught this. Well, yeah, you were never taught it because your instructor doesn't know about it. And if you have an instructor that goes back to being a black belt 30 years ago, for whatever reason, he didn't teach it to you. And I think a lot of the reason why he didn't teach it to you was just because at the time, you know, maybe around the late 90s or so, um, maybe early 2000s, they were transitioning from jiu-jitsu for self-defense to jiu-jitsu for competition because the thought was, it's already been proven that jiu-jitsu is the best. So why even worry about doing the fights anymore, right? That the jiu-jitsu's past that. So since it's past that, why even concentrate on that? The problem with that mentality is that it's no longer jiu-jitsu if you don't show the core fundamentals, right? Okay, or they say, well, you know, we, we teach that in our fundamentals course. But once you get to advanced, nobody wants to be fundamental. They want to be advanced. Right? So if you're, if you're training in a fundamentals course, in a fundamentals class, let's say at 6 p.m., because 7 p.m. is the advanced, your thinking always is, I want to get to that advanced class. I don't want to be in fundamentals. I'm just doing this just to go through the drill of learning this stuff so that I can eventually get to the advanced class and never do this again. Right? In their mind, they're thinking, okay, this is self-defense. I need to know it. But the thought is that you know all the black belts don't do this anymore. They've moved up from it. But I'm learning it because I need to learn it. Well, here's the thing: if you learn it, you don't, and you don't keep doing it, your skills will deteriorate, right? If you don't sharpen a knife, the knife will become dull. It'll still be a knife, but it won't be sharp anymore. And I contend this for jujitsu: if you don't know the basics and you don't continue the basics, then your jujitsu will not be as good as it could be. Right? Just because you know how to do, do these concepts that are advanced, and in my mind, they're not really advanced, they're just different. But there are the building blocks of jiu-jitsu that you need to do, and if you move away from them, it will affect your overall ability. Well, let's say you're this guy training for nine or 10 years or whatever, and you're, you're well advanced with belts, I don't know what you be, purple, brown, black belt, I don't know, it doesn't matter. And you decide that, you know, I hear about this other school and you go there, it's a fundamental school, old, old school style, style. Uh, maybe, in, maybe a Hoist affiliate, maybe, maybe a Helsin affiliate, or maybe a common jiu-jitsu affiliate, who knows, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, a school that, uh, that, that focuses on the old style jiu-jitsu. And you get there and you notice, wait a minute, these guys that have been training for a year, two years, three years, I, they're killing me. Um, I, I can't get position on them. Um, you know, when, when they get on top of me, I can't get out. Um, you know, you have that, that, that thought, the thought is, man, he's all over me, right? Or, 
he's dominating me. What, what's going on here, right? At first you think, okay, I'm gonna play loose. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get out of everything. And then after a few minutes, you realize, I'm not able to get out of this. He's, I, I, can't, I can't get on top of him. You know, a lot of times you're shell-shocked and your thought is, holy crap, you know, you have to kind of process what's going on here, right? You know, first you go up against one of the top guys. Okay, you know, I can get, I, I get it, I, I could lose to him. Not a big deal, right? Then you go up against the one right under him. Okay, you know, top guys, you know, maybe top two, top three guys. Yeah, that's fine, you know. It's just a matter of me adjusting my game and, you know, I'll be able to take them out. You know, I'll be able to, to beat them at some point. Now you start going up against guys who have been training just a couple of years. And man, I can't pass this guy's guard. Or I get cross-eyed or mount on him and I can't hold him down. What's going on here? You know, and they get, you, you kind of get, you have a couple of ways to look at it. You can go, oh my God, I haven't been exposed to this. Something is different. What's going on here? Or it could be, you could get upset. You know, you start thinking, you start doubting yourself. I remember we had a couple of instances in, uh, in the Irvine school um, or at Southern California school where people would come in with advanced belts and, you know, friends of members, members tell them, hey, you know, come on by and they come in, they train and they, they realize that, you know, they're just not doing as well as they, they thought or not, and not doing as well as they do in their own school. And they look at it as, oh, wow, you know, so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. I'm, I'm realizing that now. Okay, um, so this member who's a friend of his tells him, well, then maybe you should join up. You know, then you can learn this stuff. Yeah, you know, that would be good. And if I were to do this all over again, I would definitely do that. But, you know, I'm so close now to my goal, my, my belt goal at this school that I'm at right now, I think I'll just stay put. Now, I've, I've heard that many times. Come from, 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 you know, training with Dave, and, you know, black belts come through, and they're like, wow, you know, I didn't know this. Or brown belts come through, yeah, I, I, I've been training for 10 or 15 years, and I've, I've never learned this, right? And a couple of them will stay. A couple of them will. The majority, the vast majority of them, it's, uh, it's, it's you, know, you know, like we talk about that, you know, getting your mind blown. It, it, it's not like getting your mind blown, it's getting your mind exploded because you're going, the UPA works at the black belt level? The elbow escape, that doesn't work? You know, I'm, I'm a, let's say I'm a, I'm a brown belt and I still, I still feel anxious when somebody takes my back, right? It, it's still, I'm still fearful of it. I may not think I am, but every time somebody, you know, is threatening it, I, I, I go ape shit and I try my best not to ever let them get it. Instead of just letting me have it and then figure out how to get out, right? And we do have a black belt who um, is thinking he wants to join the school, but uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it's hard. Um, even here in the Texas school, I had uh, two brown belts that uh, would train in my garage with me and you know, realized there was a bunch they didn't know and you know, I gave them the opportunity to come on board and you know train with Dave and us, and and they decided no. You know, I'm 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 close to my my black belt now, so no, nah, I'll, I'll pass, right? Because the belt was important to them, and I get it. You know, and I didn't. You know, I don't begrudge them for that. I, I completely understand. But it's it's a it's a tough thing to do, and you know, like I'd mentioned earlier, I had two guys that came and trained multi years. I think six years and seven years respectively came on board, and. They were both purple belts and would not put their purple belt on. You know, even the purple belt with the white bar, which we, we give, you know, to show that they earned the rank, they just earned it somewhere else. Um, until they learn our curriculum and, you know, then we switch the belt back out. They wouldn't, they went straight back to white belt. And, and it wasn't my choice. I didn't tell them they to do it. They just said, no, it's a different art. So I'm gonna treat it as a different art. So under this system, I'm a purple belt, but under, under your system, I'm starting all over again. I'm starting a white belt. Fine. That attitude is very, very, very uncommon because they hear jujitsu, so they think it has to be the same. And because it has to be the same, then this is what I earned my rank in. Well, no, you earned your rank in that jujitsu school, but that jujitsu school is different. We both call jujitsu, but it's different. You know, the more common reaction, I'm sad to say, is to be frustrated with yourself. Frustrated with yourself, frustrated with your old teacher frustrated in general, frustrated with the guys who are beating you, who've been training less than half as long as you, 
but always know what your next move is. And it's even worse when they're not phenomenal athletes and they don't train any more often than you do. You know, you might have trained three times a week. They train two or three times a week. They're not guys that are, that are mat rats. You know, they're not on the mat every single day. They don't have any edge from you other than where they were training, right? If I were to go to a competition school and I want to learn the game that they do. I want to learn the grip games. I want to learn the, the rap games. I want to learn how to do the, the inversion and all that. I would definitely walk in there and put a white belt on because that is not a game that I know. I am clueless when it comes to that. I've seen stuff, but I don't know how to execute them. I understand a lot of concepts. So I, I have no doubt that you know if I were to start off as a white belt in a competition school, I would go through the ranks pretty quick. It wouldn't take me long to figure things out, but I do not know that game. You know, just as that's the way I think, if I were to go to a competition school and I want to earn a black belt at another school, I would go in there and say, it's a different art. You know, let me, let me just walk in with a white belt and you just progress me as you see fit, right? So why doesn't it make sense when you come from a competition to a self-defense association that it's the same thing, right? It's hard. You know, we've been doing this for a number of years and and it's hard and change is hard. Try not to get all discouraged. Just like I said, think of it as a different art. You're learning something brand new, right? Just like with, uh, with karate. You know, there's a number of different types of karate. And, you know, in fact, you just right down the street over there is a school that says karate, but I know for a fact they teach Taekwondo, right? Um, in fact, there's two of them that I can think of. They call themselves karate, but they teach Taekwondo. You know, it all comes down to marketing at some point. So let's say, you know, you're, you're, you're another guy, you train American karate, and you walk into the school and you see them doing Taekwondo stuff. Then what do you do? Most people, and this happens for other arts, and, and it doesn't happen for jujitsu as often, but it happens for other arts. They will say, okay, yes, I, I earned a black belt in this karate, but I'm not gonna earn a black belt in your karate, right? And they list that, you know, then I have two, three, four, five black belts, right? They're all karate black belts. It's just under a different instructor. Um, Jiu-Jitsu guys don't tend to do that. You know, they tend to think just because I'm a, I'm a black belt under Pedro Sauer, that I should be a black belt under Hoist Gracie, or I should be a black belt under Gracie Baja. I don't think that's true. Um, it's gotten specialized to the point where schools have their own identity, so to speak. If a school or a member can get you playing their game, they're gonna beat you. If you can get to play your game, you're gonna beat them. At any rate, that's all I got for you. Thanks guys for subscribing and thanks for the comments. And be sure to check out our Patreon channel. You can help the channel out below also by looking at our links below. And if there's anything that you like on there, go ahead and buy it. It helps the channel out. Um, also, Hickson's self-defense unit, you need to get that. Um, it's, it's, it's from Hickson himself. And how long do we expect he's gonna be doing this kind of stuff, right? Anyway, hope all is well. Take care, happy training, bye-bye.